name is Alex Mazur, and I'm here today to tell you what you need to know to pick the instrument that is perfect for you. Musical instruments are very strange and special objects. Musicians often feel deeply connected with their primary instrument, considering it even to be a part of their identity. These pieces of wood, plastic, or metal allow players to express the emotions they feel inside of them through the music they play. Jamming with friends, seeing your skills develop as a player, are only a few of the many great rewards that learning a musical instrument has to offer. You must be thinking, Mr. Mazur, how do I start? The first step to becoming a musician is to choose your instrument. Instruments come in families. They are grouped into these families by how they make sound. There are instruments in the world of band, which consists of the brass family, the woodwind family, and the percussion family. In the orchestra world, we have the string family. There are also a few instruments that exist outside of the classic school curriculum. We'll group those into the miscellaneous family. The perfect instrument for you is determined by your physique, your personality, your favor for high or low tones, and the kind of music you enjoy. Let's dive in. The first instruments we will talk about are those that compose the band ensemble. We will start with the woodwind family. Woodwinds are characterized by a wooden reed, which vibrates in the player's mouth in order to produce sound. This instrument is called the clarinet. It's made of wood or plastic, uses a reed, and has open holes, which you cover with your fingers to play different notes. Clarinet has a wide range of notes, meaning it can play bright and high resonant notes, or rich, low, dark sounding notes. Really low if you play the bass clarinet. They often play the melody in bands, but are on the quieter range of instruments. If you love fun music, but prefer quieter sounds, the clarinet could be for you. Here's a demonstration of the sound. This is a saxophone. Like the other woodwinds, it uses a reed to play. It's important to have a bunch of reeds in case one breaks. The sax is made of metal and have keys that cover the holes when you press them down. Saxophones come in three main sizes. Most common are the alto and the tenor, followed by the baritone. There's also the soprano, which is most often seen in sax quartets. The saxophone is a prominent jazz instrument adding to the cool factor that it is known by. And is featured in pop songs ranging from Macklemore's Thrift Shop to Ariana Grande's Problem to the Christmas time favorite, Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. Here's a demonstration of the saxophones. The flute is a slight variation on the standard woodwind because it doesn't need a reed. Sound is produced by the airstream splitting over an edge, sending vib vibrations through the chamber, much like blowing over a bottle. It is a unique instrument in that aspect. Many people love the sound of the flute, airy, pure, natural. It is the highest pitch instrument in the band, except for its cousin, the piccolo. <laughs> It almost exclusively plays melody due to its ability to pierce through even quite loud ensembles. Flute requires lots of air, so be prepared for deep breaths. Here's how it sounds. The oboe looks a lot like the clarinet, 
but actually belongs to the subfamily of double reeded instruments, meaning it has two reeds that vibrate against each other in order to make its music. <laughs> this gives it an extra reedy sound that can be beautiful when played well. They often double what the flute plays, just lower. Oboe is generally an uncommon instrument, so you'll have to be independent and okay without many other players on your part. Here's that double reed sound. The bassoon, like the oboe, is a double reeded instrument, obviously much larger, giving it a deeper sound and causing you to sit while you play. Like the name implies, it plays the bass part in music ensembles, the lowest notes. Because of the cost of the instrument, bassoon is very uncommon. Most schools don't even own one. You'll likely have very few people in your section, if anyone else. For this reason, you'll need to be self-reliant, but the individuality can be very rewarding. Due to the lack of bassoon players, colleges often give large scholarships to promising bassoonists to play in their ensembles. Here's the bassoon sound. 